Hi guys, it's Jody. Today's video, I'm extending it as part two of my last video. <laughs> I really loved that color combination and uh, uh, it got a, a really great response. So I wanted to come back and do a couple more pieces with it. I'm going to do an 8x10 oval and then an 8x8 uh, wood panel with it today. My last video was more about uh, teaching how I embellish my blooms and blowouts. So I just wanted to have a little fun with the colors today and see what, what spins out on, on the spinner today with it. Since I was just so shocked the last time. <laughs> so... Also, you may notice I'm changing up the angle a little bit. I liked last uh, the last video where I put all the colors and blew it out on the bench. It's actually easier on my back than bending over my spinner <laughs> and then moving it over the spinner. So I'm going to try doing that for a while. Let me know what you think in the comments below if you like if you like watching it that way better or you know me doing it different different angles my two different camera angles on the spinner itself so with that let's go have some fun all right all right all the colors that um i used from last week i'm using the same ones it's going to be at the beginning of this video uh an image and uh also while i'm talking through this it'll come up on the screen but the pillow paint I'm using is for this one is going to be the Glidden Premium Eggshell. I might have to use my uh, my other one for the next canvas because I, I think I'm running out of my little container. I don't know if I have enough, but we'll see. All right. Some of you have asked how to combat bubbles and <laughs> they are they are a nuisance and something I sh I think everybody struggles with them in your pillow paint in your mixed colors um, let me kind of show you the container so when I get my gallon container of pillow paint I will usually put it in a smaller container this is an old 32 ounce yogurt container and I'll let it sit for three or four days just to kind of let the bubbles escape. When you put it into a smaller container, there isn't as much air that can uh, get in once it's, if it's more condensed. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Um, let me put it another way. When you're towards the end of a gallon can, you're going to notice it's probably a little bit more bubbly because you have more air in there. So I try to put it into smaller containers as I'm using it so the bubbles don't form. So that's one way I help to get rid and it looks pretty good. Now for your paints, whenever I mix them, I usually let them sit at least a few hours, if not overnight. If you let them sit overnight, they're probably gonna separate it's normal. It's, it happens all the time. I mean, it's just, it's the natural part of, of paint and varnish. It, it'll separate, but I'll just give it a slow remixing stir. And there are going to be a little bit of bubbles in there. You're never going to have bubble free. At least I've never encountered extremely bubble free, <laughs> but you can minimize just, you know, s slowly stirring, kind of getting the bubbles out but you want to let them rest. And these I opened up just a little bit ago and I let them rest so they look pretty good. But this is, so this paint is the uh, the blue. Uh, it was the Amsterdam greenish blue mixed with the Prussian blue. And then this is mixed with my Glidden Minwax pouring medium. bit more. I want to save some for the next painting. All right, this, oops, I didn't show you the consistency. I know I showed you the last video, but I try to, I try to show you. They, they do pretty much stay the same. I don't find that once I've mixed paints and then let them sit, I don't find that they thicken. Um, I think I have a pretty good seal with these, these lidded containers. This one is the uh, this little piggy pigment 
Twilight. And I have this mixed. I think I was trying something new. Normally I would mix it with the Bare Glidden. Um, but this was an experiment just to see how the pigment mixed up. And I actually have it mixed with just Bare. I think Bare and Joe Sonia. But normally I would mix it with... Uh, my Bear Glidden Joe Sonia mixture. You know me in experiments, so. <laughs> Just a little bit more. And then this green is the Mod Podge of greens. This was, um, oh shoot, what did I do? Oh, it was the Joe Sonia Celadon mixed with uh, this little piggy seaweed, and they were both mixed with different pouring mediums. Um, the two that I normally use, which you'll see at the beginning of this video, and I'll also write down in um, the description, actually not the description, but um, on this, on, well, you'll see it on your screen. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> uh, and then I mixed those two together and added the golden fluid green gold. And I will write all that down again just so you have it in case you want to recreate it it is a really pretty green I didn't have a lot of the seaweed left the seaweed pigment so it's not heavily prevalent in it All right, and then this is the Josonia Titanium White mixed with the uh, Glidden Min Wax. Let's just put a little bit. All righty. All right, I wanted to change angles so you can see how I blow it out. I'm going to be using the same two cell activators. Uh, this one is the Amsterdam Deep Gold mixed with the Australian Flow Troll. And then this one is Amsterdam, the Turquoise Green. And I put the Deep Gold down first. All right, changing angles back for my embellishments. I'm not going to completely walk through again uh, like I did the last time. Otherwise, this video will be a bit longer than I anticipated. And I want to get through another painting as well. Wow, this really blew out nice. Oh, I want to get some of that pink in there. Okay. Oops. Mind the paint, Jody. <laughs> Sometimes I forget there's pillow paint on there. And I need a place to rest my hand. I'm trying to get... skewer to go the way I want it to. I don't have a lot of embellishment to do here. I do want to put some pink right in here. A little 
bit. Just a little. There we go. Bring that just a little. There we go. I think that's good. All right, so now we're gonna bring this over to the spinner and spin it out. Well, technically it's on the spinner. It's just getting it into my spinner box. <laughs> I see a little white spot that's come up. I try to push those back down. Otherwise, when you spin it out, it'll get bigger. Unless you want it there, which is, that's fine too. All right, I'm gonna put my gloves on. I'll spin this out. Yeah, I don't think I need to add any more pillow because I don't have, I have the, the, you can't see it, but I have this, since this is a wood cradle board, I only have, I have just like maybe an eighth of an inch on the side. The rest is taped up because I like the natural wood look, so. All right, here, oops, you're crooked. There we go. There's what that looks like. Bear with me. Sometimes I forget to talk <laughs> because I'm so involved in the moment. <laughs> try and save as much as this as I can. I'm glad I didn't add more paint to it because that's less I have to spin. All right, little baby spins. I want to keep a lot of this. a little bit. I got to spin more. I don't want to, but I got to in order to get more off. Let's see. That's better. Yeah, this, this I can, this I can leave. This is beautiful. Wow. Look at those colors. This is <laughs> color combination I created by accident. All right, let me get this off and show you, and then I will move on to the next one. Oh, wow, yeah. Towards the end of the video, I'll bring you over for flyovers, too. All right. This is the 8x10 oval. I got this at Hobby Lobby. It's my first time using it, so we'll see how uh, how it goes. Oops, you know what? I gotta get my pillow paint. I'll be right back. All right. Yeah, I definitely had to uh, switch over to the Menards Pittsburgh Ultra in satin. I didn't have enough of my Glidden Premium eggshell. I thought I had enough for both pieces, but I don't. And I mean, that's okay. That's why I have two different pillow paints that I like. Um, I can interchange them and they, they work well with all the paints I use, the pouring mediums I use. So I kind of like having a backup. If one gets too bubbly, I can switch to another, all that good stuff. All right. That. Where is my stick? Oops. Look how many bubbles that come up from pouring it out of the cup. All right. I'm gonna do the same order. Or should I change it up? Nah, I'm gonna do the same order.
This is the same blue I mixed up from the last one. I might add a little bit more of the pink just to get a little bit, a little bit more in there. Color outside of the lines a little bit. Oops. I tend to drip everywhere, so I don't worry about it. <laughs> more often than not, it gets it's going to get spun out anyways. Just a touch more. All right, we'll see. We'll see what that gives us. And then the green. Kind of like this height a little bit better <laughs> instead of hunching over my my spin box what do you guys think do you like this view better should i keep doing it this way all right that's good with the green and a little bit of the titanium white middle a little bit all right gold cell activator first and then the greenish blue I said oops because <clears throat> I blew a little bit too hard. This Pittsburgh is just a touch thicker than the uh, premium, the Glidden Premium. <laughs> and I saw the uh, the pillow paint when I said oops, uh, <laughs> I was blowing a little too hard, but it seemed to bounce back pretty well. All right. I've got a few bubbles. If I can blow on them to pop them, I will. Otherwise, I'll just take my skewer and pop them. I want to get some color in here, though. There we go. Put pink in there right there. Get rid of that white dot. I want to do something here, but I'm not sure. Let's just put a little baby spin in there.
All right, bring this over to my spin box. All right, um, I think I want to put just a little bit more paint along the edge. This canvas actually has edges that I need to get over, so put a little bit more. All right, here we go. canvas like that. <laughs> oh, little baby spin. Still got a little bit more paint on there. I'll try and bring it this way just a little. It looks un like it's under the sea almost. That is so cool. All right, I'm gonna bring this one over, get cleaned up, and I'll bring you over for the flyover of both of them. All right, here's the flyover of the first piece. I love, I love this section right here. <laughs> I can't point. <laughs> This really turned out nice. I love those cells right in there, especially that little, that purpley one right there. They look like little islands. All right. Here's the second flyover. I love that twilight coming through. Mixing with the blue, giving it kind of a purple. And I love this blue cell activator over here. It's kind of like, a, it's like drifting in the sea. Yeah. Really cool stuff. All right. There's the second one. I'll be back to show you the dried results. And I'm back to give you the... Uh, show you the dried results of the paintings that I just did. So this is the eight by eight on the wood panel I did and it dried exactly as you saw it wet. However, something curious happened. If you can see, can you see that? The circle and I can only see it on half. a little bit better. <clears throat> that I believe is from the pillow paint. Um, I've only ever had that happen once before and I've seen it happen with others. Um, I'm not entirely sure why it happens. These are just my after thinking about it for a while and it could be because my pillow paint 
was sitting there for a while as I was blowing it out, talking to you, embellishing, um, all that kind of stuff. And because it's cooler in here, it may have set faster, but it's still spinning out. So that's, it's, it's kind of strange. Um, and also the other thing I was thinking, I usually add paint around when I initially put my pillow paint, uh, do, you know, blow it out, do my embellishments, and then I'll add paint around and it kind of, you know, makes it more, there, there's, there's just more paint on there and it, it's not a perfect circle. And I'm wondering, had I done that, if I would have gotten that. I mean, I, it doesn't bother me because, you know, I'm going to resin this and it's going to hang on a wall and you're really not going to see it. But I just thought it was very interesting. If, um, if this has happened to any of you and you know exactly why, uh, please share it with me, you know, in the comments below. This, it's, it's very curious to me and it only happened on one side that I can see. I can faintly see maybe the other side, but it's more the paint took over. So, but as I've always said, I'm a texture girl. I don't mind it, but it's, it's kind of weird. <laughs> so anyway, this is the first, this is the first piece I did. And then I did tape off this. So really just this section, um, the rest is going to be the, the wood <clears throat> once I take the tape off and resin it. And the oval piece turned out really, I just, I love, 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 love the, the shimmers from that pigment. But I just, I love how this came out here. It's just kind of shooting off that way. And this is a nice canvas. This was the first time I was trying out uh, one of the oval canvases from Hobby Lobby and I'm pretty pleased with how it dried. I mean, it dried nice and nice and smooth. I haven't decided if I'm going to varnish or resin this one, but yeah, no, the sides took to it pretty well also. So I am super pleased with that. And then off camera, I did do, I had a little bit of paint left over. Uh, I did this cute little this cute little one. This is a uh, four, it's a four by four canvas that I get. Um, and they come with little stands. I love these. <laughs> they make cute little gifts. You can get these stands too, I think separately at uh, Hobby Lobby Michaels. I've seen them for when you get them on sale, I think they're three or four of them for a few bucks. But I love these little canvases to use up. If you're if you're not going to be using tile, if you have these little canvases to use up extra extra paint. But I just wanted to show you. I get them. The, these ones I get are by Arteza, and they come in a pack of fourteen. Um, I get them. You can get them on Arteza.com or I also get them on Amazon. They, they're roughly about the same price. Sometimes Amazon can be a little bit cheaper, especially if you're a Prime member. I do have it listed. I I'm now have an Amazon storefront, so I do have that and a lot of other things that I use in all my videos in there. So if you're ever looking for a link of, you know, what, oh, where, where do you get that dryer or, you know, the, the containers I use in the mixing sticks, it's all down in the description. If you go to my storefront, it's all there. And if you see something else that I don't have there and you're looking for it, just let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to, to add it. So with that, I, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I really had a lot, a lot of fun making this video, these paintings, this color combo is going, going on my list of top favorites. So, so please like share and subscribe and I will see you next time. Thanks so much for watching.